In last video, we understood that future has a blocking nature. It blocks the main thread until we get the result, which means that the program cannot move forward. To overcome this limitation, we have completable future. Completable future provides non-blocking methods that allow the main thread to continue executing its tasks. The moment we get the result, we can use built-in callback APIs to process it. For example, here I have created completable instance. To start with, we can either use run async or supply async. When we use run async, we don't expect any return value. So we have to avoid this return statement. Again, here it should be void. But if you want to get any result there, in that case, we can use supply async. So for our use case, we are using here supply async and we want to return a four. Okay. It is actually in a form of string. Once we get the result, we can transform it using methods like then apply or if we want to just consume the result without returning anything further, we can use then accept. So in this case, we are just trying to consume this food. So yes, we are using this then accept method. This basically doesn't return anything further. Now, when we try to run this code, restaurant main thread is actually running. Then biryani is ordered, then biryani is prepared, biryani is delivered, then restaurant is closed. With the help of this then accept, it is not blocking the main thread and we were able to run the main thread logic further. That's how we can utilize this completable future and we have a lot many features available in completable futures. Those we will see it in next videos.